All right, guys, Matt says I'm now partial Hawaiian because I have on the traditional Hawaiian shoe. They have been using these out here to alua fish for thousands of years. These are the legendary tabbies. Sea Sport has been making these for a couple thousand years. The Hawaiians love them. They've passed that knowledge down throughout the generations, and now we use them today. Any epic expedition out here in Hawaii that requires tabbies is always guaranteed a good time. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. Today we have something really, really freaking cool for you guys. We're going fishing with the legend Alua Mat. We're gonna do the traditional Alua fishing from shore, which is the big poles. We got eels and stuff for bait. We're probably gonna do some spear fishing too. The water looks incredible. So we're exploring a new part of the island today, a place that I've never actually been to before. You know, I've driven past down here. We come down when we're cruising other places, but I've never dove down here. I've never fished down here. I've always wanted to explore it. It's usually pretty rough, and I thought it was gonna be rough today, but guys, we have the most incredible conditions. But first, we gotta get down this crazy road. Check this out, guys. You can really only get to a lot of these places in Hawaii. You know, I'm always saying that over and over about, you know, go the extra mile, do the four-wheel driving, hike, walk, swim further, whatever you gotta do to get a little bit further off the beaten path than everybody else, truly makes a difference for finding fish out here in Hawaii. All right guys, we didn't know it, but we're actually on a Hawaiian cultural tour today with, with Alua Matt. He does unbelievable land tours here on the island. He does manta tours, dolphin tours, all that kind of cool stuff. He's not working a whole lot right now, are you? <laughs> Time to play. So the coronavirus thing is going on right now, so there is no tourists on the island. Pretty much all of us lost our jobs. So go ahead and smash that like button so that I can create these YouTubes and hopefully survive out here during the coronavirus. Check this out. So you can see where we're gonna be going out and fishing right on top of this hill. Shoreline is very, very dangerous. People lose their lives a lot here. It's very jagged, a uh -uh, lava rock, very, very sharp. The specific point we're fishing, the water peels around the point, splashes in the back. It's a safe spot to fish. All the neighboring points you'd lose your life very easily the waves come up they'll be 12 to 15 feet surge suck you right off the rocks um, right now being that the water is so calm you could never tell it's still a little bumpy but this is this is perfect ideal conditions for this area we got to get all of this stuff hiking it all the way out there to the beach holy shit how far are we going of a mile of your life. Holy crap. I feel like we just left. Where's the truck? Oh my gosh. There's the truck. Anywhere. You gotta work for. There will be more fish guys. That's like one of my main principles of spearfishing. Do whatever you can do to get off that beaten path and I promise it'll be worth it. This is home. What's up Peter? Hey. Ryan. I'm Ryan up. How are you? Good to meet you. Hey, good to meet you too, man. First fish, huh? Yeah. Check that thing out. Oh, he's really good to eat. Really good to eat, but uh. But I'm gonna use him for bait. Right, right where the dorsal stays, so it's like balanced, and he'll be alive and just sitting there, but he won't be able to get away. He'll just be swimming like this, and then another the fish will come in. And uh, hopefully hit him. He's got a weight that he already casted out there, and he's got the line tight. And then he's gonna slide this bait all the way down. They choose these Alua spots because they're like these sheer walls that go down. So he'll slide down, it'll be about 20 feet off the bottom, and then he'll stay and there. And probably where the, the line ends up is probably like, oh, 60, 80 feet, feet okay. way out there. The Hawaiians had all these these places built up with little fishing villages and you can see little shelters here and there. Woo! Well guys, that is the plan. That's what we're doing for like the next 24 hours. We'll be out here all night, a lua fishing. This is the magic bait here that we use. So these are uh, Puhipaka, one of the Ulua's favorite. This skin is super tough. In the nighttime, I'd fillet these. I'd cut them open, fillet them really nice. There's less fish and predators at night. There's only a handful of species. The daytime, there's hundreds of species. If I fillet this and put it out there in the day, 
that bell will tinker, 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 they'll skin it. Eat the meat off the skin, you'll pretty much end up with only skin left. If I slide just a nice chunk like this and leave it whole like that, they'll actually eat the ends of it. They'll pick away at all of this here and get as much as they can of the unexposed skin. But if an ulua comes by, they will still eat that chunk. So we're only gonna have it out a couple hours until it gets dark. We're trying to get some live bait for dark. Fishermen and marlin fishermen seeking that thousand pound marlin. The shore caster seeks that hundred pound ulua, which is a GP or giant trevally. Challenge getting from shore. 20 pounder will eat that, but so will a hundred pounder. It's a perfect bait right there. My biggest is 98 and a half pounds. All right guys, well I am gonna jump in the water. He's gonna set those rods out. We will see you in the water. So when I first hop in a new spot, my kind of first instinct is to go out and find the deeper water and see what kind of the structure is out there. You know, I'm always looking for that uku grounds or that ono grounds or anything like that. And that's exactly what I did here. I swam straight offshore and I found this pinnacle that was holding all of this bait fish. You can see all these opalus there swimming around. That's kind of like the local bait fish of choice out here. They kind of really ball up and anything could be hunting these. You know, there could be onos around, there could be ahi swimming through there, and there could definitely be ukus or anything else. Everything out here on the reef eats these fish. In this bait school here, I could see a giant barracuda that was just kind of hanging out, hunting them. A couple kava kavas or bonitas were kind of cruising around with it too, and I knew this really had potential. I spent a lot of time just hanging out with this school, really trying to wait and see if that trophy came through. Unfortunately, it didn't, and I decided to go off and hit the reef. Now I know Matt really wanted a couple goats to take home and these areas that are remote are known for these goats. I mean, nobody hits these spots so the goats get big and they're dumb. You can see those two big Moana Kali's I just spotted. They're kind of cruising around. And again, I've got the big gun here. I was looking for something big so it's a little bit overkill for these guys. So I've got to kind of lead them a little bit in front of them and that's what I tried to do with this big goat here and unfortunately he just stopped and I completely whiffed. So now it was really getting late and I knew I had to make it back to shore and get out of the water before it got dark. Matt had warned me that it gets really dark really fast on this side of the island because the sun sets on the other side and it's blocked by the mountain. You can see how kind of cool this structure is here and how many goatfish it holds. I mean, these Joe Lewis goats are a great, great indicator of how healthy the reef population is. You know, they're kind of like one of the first ones that get taken out of the reef by spear fishermen. So any place you see schools of them and schools of big ones like this, you know not very many people hit. Now I've got my big gun here, that Rob Allen 120 roller. This is my Wahoo tuna gun. So it's definitely overkill for these little one pound fish, but that's why I love it so much is I have access to both at the same time. And if I wanna take one of these small goats, I can no problem. So I'm kind of taking my time to see what comes in. I mean, I know these Joes aren't gonna leave and I can wait and see if anything better comes along. Eventually I decide it's time to go up and I'm gonna take this goat get a lucky stone shot on him, and I managed to line it up so I do not hit the reef at all. You can see how kind of cool this structure is here. I call them like these Christmas tree reefs, and I see these all over the island, and wherever they are, they seem to hold fish. And that was exactly true right here. I did another drop on that same spot that I just got in that goat, and you can see the schools of them. I mean, these Joes are just in schools. Now that can be for two reasons. I mean, I'm definitely in a remote spot, but these Joes also tend to really school up at sunset. I've noticed that over and over and over on this island that they all seem to come out of the woodwork and appear. And I got another beautiful Joe here and I was ready to head back to shore. I always kind of laugh when I'm diving and I see people fishing and then I see their baits and I see like how ridiculous they look and I'm like, that is never gonna catch anything. It's like down there wrapped around the rocks, just looking silly. But this bait looked great. I mean, you can see the system that Matt has here with the weight tight to the bottom and then that, that big chunk of eel just swaying in the current up high out of the reef so anything swimming along would bump right into it. So Matt was kind of having a tough time catching bait. So when I got back to the rocks, he was like, hey man, shoot a couple Nanui for me or these chubs out here. So I did that, I grabbed a few and he would cast out the line to me, I would hook it up and he had live bait, which was pretty sick. Live bait's always better when you're going fishing. So we just got out of the water. Really, really cool freaking dive. Great looking place. I dove this big pinnacle out there for a while looking for something big. Didn't find it. Missed one goat. Saw some lobsters.
Got a couple Moonoos or Joe Lewis. Those are gonna be awesome to eat. Can't wait for Sam to cook those up. I am changing, I was naked, and one of the reels started screaming. Whew. We're gonna go check it out. Matt's taking care of it right now. What happened? Missed the strike. Missed the beat. Big old. Damn. It happened. So I saw, shot some little chubs like in the tail and he would cast his line out, we'd snag it on. So he's got a bunch of live baits. Where do you have those? In the tidal pools. You got it, he's got them stored in the tide pools. But we're gonna be out here all night long. We've got a ton of rods out, live baits everywhere. And then we're gonna start whipping for the Aveo Aveos and Menpachi and Hole Hole and all the small fish that are hopefully coming to the lanterns. So we'll try and show you guys that as much as possible. I don't know how it's gonna come out. Oh, there it is! Yo! Yo, another strike here! I got it, I got it, I got it! Fuck, it missed too. Come on, baby, come back, get it. It looks slack, dude, it looks it slack, is. it's slack. It's coming, it's coming back. See? Oh, it's going back, dude, it's going back, it's going back. It's getting ready to go. It's getting ready to go right now. Yep. You! Get it! Yoo-hoo! Almost just died. I do not have my tobbies on. <laughs> hook a little deeper on one side because the way the circle hook is as you pull through, right. kind of wiggle it in a little higher on the other side because I like my hook to sit with all that point exposed. And then I use a rubber band to hold my hook where I want it to be. And she just will keep the hook from wearing a hole in it. Yeah, I like it. It causes him to swim a little funny. See yeah. how he's not up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like well, he's, it's going to cause him to work. That's awesome. He's wounded and he's working and he's got big problems ahead of him. Yeah, he does. See you later, buddy. See you, buddy. Woo-hoo! <laughs> guys, guys, we got a bite. That real scream. Yes, real is screaming out. Woohoo! So got him? Yeah. Woohoo! Hopefully the giant trevally, the alua, the king of the ocean out here in Hawaii. Three bites already. Holy crap. I'm truly impressed. I thought I was coming out here fishing. I thought it was going to be one of those, yeah, we go sleep on the rocks all night and do nothing. A big old chub for bait, guys. That's a, that's a big old fish. Guys, I tried to bend this rod earlier. Matt was like, check this out. And I could not bend it at all. Very well, could be a shark, but we will let you know in a minute. Got color. I don't know, man. Looks like a sharky pie. Like a shark to me. So it's good practice. Oh, beautiful tiger. Little baby tiger. Damn. How cool is that? Little tiger shark. Guys, I was diving right there like half an hour ago. How's the fishing up here? Uh, nothing yet. Nothing yet, huh? Is this what we're looking for? Is this the target species? They tell me this is not the target species. We're out here looking for Aveo Veo and Menpachi and just whipping, seeing whatever we can find. Not these. Menpachi! It's not a big one, guys. It's a baby. All right, guys, the bite has officially turned on. Check out this guy. Ha! Ah, bit me. This should have been an aquarium catching night. I am the baby fish catcher. Guys, I'm gonna quit spear fishing. Start fishing full time. Still not the species we're looking for. Peter here is gonna put this guy on a hook. Go out there, see if he can't turn this little top bang into a giant alua. I don't know what these little things are, but I have mastered catching them. This is what we're looking for, sort of. Nice big alihi. Anything red is gold. They want this for bait. That's a toad, isn't it? 
So this is that Aliihi, guys. You guys have seen me shoot this one before. It's got those saber two spikes on it right there. Look at those. We're gonna go ahead and cut this. With the swisher. <laughs> 2 a.m. This is where we're fishing, guys. We just wouldn't be camping if it didn't start to rain. So we set up shelter. We're chilling. Just waiting for the bite. Good morning. This is camp where we spent the night last night. Mostly nice and dry in there. It rained a lot all night long. We did not get any bites. That is fishing. I think we uh, will be sticking to spear fishing. I don't know if we're going to be able to get in the water and do a dive or not. We'll see. I'm going to go check on Matt. See what's going on. So we still got a chance. Waiting to see if we can't get that sunrise bite. Conditions kind of look epic. I think I'm gonna have my Lua breakfast and go out there and three prongs and fish. So when I was in there the night before, I could see all the big coles and the aveo veos and everything kind of coming out of the rocks right at sunset. And I didn't have enough time to grab the three prong, but the next time I had a chance, I made a point to get out there with the three prong in the morning and see if I could get some of these cole and some of these aveo veo and take them home to eat. So you can see that aveo veo right there. He went into their hole and that's kind of like how these aveo veo live. They're down in the holes and they come out at night and at sunset. You can see that big giant eye they have. They're definitely made to hunt at night. The key with these things is to sit here and really hold position on the rocks be ready, load it up. They're kind of spooky. They like to hide down in those cracks and wait until you get that shot. And that's exactly what I did here. I'm really positioned here, waiting, holding position in that swell until I get the shot of this thing kind of sweeping back and forth and getting pushed out in the current. And then I got an awesome shot. I think this is my first Aveo Veo I've actually ever shot. Ever since I did that first Cole video, I've been kind of obsessed with Cole. So that was my target here. I got this one here and I don't know what it was on the other side, some other kind of Polani or surgeon fish, but managed to poke right through the Cole and get a second fish. Now, that was the whole point of this mission. I was in the water and my plan was to crush Cole. I knew I needed some for Justin. I know Sam wanted some. I really wanted to eat them all week. Like I said, I've been kind of obsessed with these little fish. So that was the goal of today got this one right here and I, you can see the system that I showed you guys before with Justin where he strings him underwater and it's attached to his belt. So in his left hand, he held that stringer and that's exactly what I set up for myself. All I have is a, a little wire belt cooey that's attached. So I attach it to my belt and then I had the free hand to my left hand so I could stay down there and keep stringing fish. I really wanted to get some of these goats on three prong and this one came right in and it was sick. I mean, this is a beautiful fish, especially on the Kona coast. These things are tough to find, and a nice solid one, one and a half pound Joe on the three prong was sick. So this next shot was pretty awesome here. I somehow, everything lined up, and I managed to nail two coles, single shot, and get them both in the head. Now, I'm not always aiming for the head on these coles. You know, it seems to not really matter. You hit them in the body, hit them in the head, but on accident, two in the head, I was stoked, and I'll take it. I feel like I really came a long way in my three pronging since my first video, but you can see there, I still miss all the time. Now, I rushed that shot a little bit, whatever, it happens, that's kind of like a problem with it being so easy to shoot. You tend to just take a lot of shots. But you can see there, I was able to get a second one and then string him right up right there. You see, I put the wire through his eyes before I take him off the spear, that way I don't run into any kind of chance of losing him. I'm still down there, I'm able to reload and then keep hunting. You know, that this whole stringer on my belt thing really solved that problem for me and it was, it was pretty awesome to be able to go down there and get multiple shots. You can see I just picked up two here in a row and I've missed one already. I'm able to stay down there, reload and look for another one. In these target rich environments, that stringer on your belt can really, really help you out a lot. Unfortunately, this one here, again, I kind of rushed the shot, tapped him, and lost him. 
So anytime I lose a few fish in a row, I tend to get a little bit more patient and a little bit more controlled with my shots. And that's kind of what was happening here. I'm really looking for that shot where he's turning and he's solid. He's not swimming away from me, he's coming into me. I was having a blast shooting these little cole. And this is something that anybody can do anywhere in the world. There are so many tiny fish species that are great fried whole in probably every single ocean. I've seen locals with makeshift spears all over the world on my travels, and they always come in with these stringers of these teeny tiny fish that are destined for the fryer. Guys, comment down below with your local mini fish that you guys like to hunt and fry whole that isn't necessarily a trophy fish, but something that you guys go out as kids or went out as beginners or still enjoy hunting today just to bring back a whole mess of them and put them in the fryer. So you guys have heard of me talk a little bit about Roy before in the past, and they're these peacock grouper that were introduced out here in Tu Hawaii, and unfortunately, a lot of them do have cigatera, but they also consume a lot of the local reef fish. So because of that, we try to take them off the reef whenever I get a chance. You know, we see them all the time, and unfortunately, it's difficult to shoot them all the time, but whenever I get a chance, especially with the three prong, they kind of present a unique challenge, and th that's what I got right here, was this beautiful peacock grouper, and you can see right here where I'm at. I'm still right in front of the fishing poles. So now I kinda had enough cole, and I really wanted to focus on these aveo veos. You guys keep telling me over and over how good these are to eat, so I really wanted to get a couple of these to take home and try. You can see how I'm kinda just creeping over stuff, and I'm looking down in these holes, and I'm looking for them, and I'm trying not to scare them before I'm able to get close enough and get a shot off at them. You can see how cool these kinda fish are, like that big tail that goes back and forth, that eye that's clearly made to hunt at night. And that's what we were looking for the night before, but unfortunately we couldn't quite find them. You can see again here this crack. I'm being really quiet and just trying to creep over and look down in these cracks and try to be non-threatening and try to get a shot off before they spook down further in the hole. You can see again there that I'm just holding position, creeping up really, really slow and quietly and trying to get close enough to get a shot before they sink back into that hole. Fresh out of the water. Check out this stringer, guys. So all night long, when we were whipping, we were looking for these. Aveo Aveo. All I had to do is jump in and shoot them. They were freaking all over. A lot of you guys have been telling me I need to try the Aveo Aveo. You guys know I love the cole. I love the menpachi. So I went out there today and I was like, Aveo Aveo are gonna die. I'm gonna find them. Plenty of cole to take home to Sam. She's gonna be pumped. Nice big old Joe on the three prong. That was cool. We went fishing all night guys, like all night, all night. It rained, we fished, worked our little ass off. We tried, but uh, but no action after all that sunset action. Right there after dark, it uh, had a bunch of bites, had that tiger shark, and then nothing after that. We made it, back to the truck. It was a pretty serious hike there, but we did it. We're gonna go home, maybe cook up some aveo veo, some coles, and take a nap. Okay, so Ryan brought home some Aveo Aveo, which I'm really excited for because I've never had it and a lot of you guys said in the comments that it's good and we should try it. So we're just gonna pan fry it in some garlic butter and see how that goes. So I didn't take the scales off these. All I did was I took them and I gutted them and I gilled them and I was told that they're really hard to scale so instead leave the scales on and then pull the skin off. Now I'm kind of sad about that because I, I really, really fell in love with eating the skin on the fish out here but it smells delicious, guys. I wish you guys could smell it. Sam is back there munching on rice. I'm so hungry. Guys, these look great. We just flipped over the first one. Check that out. It smells good, but it's not crisping up and the skin is not gonna pull away the way I was expecting it to. So I'm going back to Old Faithful here. This is what I've loved recently and we're gonna fry these guys up. It's still got some scales on it. I'm just gonna go for it. Oh my god. It's like buttery, garlicky. It's really good. You mean it's like buttery, garlicky fish? It has flavor. It doesn't taste like fish. Okay, so the skin just like peels right off. And I'm just not even taking it out of the pan. Did you see the skin? All right, guys, don't eat the skin. Whoever told me I could eat the skin, you're wrong. I have a lot of scales. I got a mouthful of scales there. Do you want to wait until we set the dining room table? No. 
Well, guys, these look freaking awesome. So Ryan just flipped the fried ones, and here's what they look like. That's what I was told it was supposed to do. I mean, the skin's coming off this garlic one, Same. garlic butter one as well, like no problem. Look, even all the bones came out. Get out of here. Guys, this is delicious. I don't know why I'm surprised. Toast totally different. The two different ways. They're both good. They're both really different. They're both super different. Yeah. Super good. Guys, I like the fried one, I think. I like the fried one too. Yours tastes like crab with so much butter or something. It does. You know, it's because it's so rich with the butter. Guys, we were starving. We probably made too many fish, but these are delicious. We're gonna we're gonna eat these right now. Yeah, no, I'm out. Sam's done, no longer talking to the camera. She's ready to eat. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I know it was a long one, but it was action packed. That camping trip was incredible. And guys, give it a like if you can. Leave something down below and subscribe because we have so much more coming for you right here on Ryan Myers Expeditions.